So we have talked a lot recently about the Death Star, the Empire's terrifying weapon of mass destruction, but I figure today we'll talk about its successor, Starkiller Base, and the planet that became Starkiller Base, Ilum. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So, Starkiller Base is one of the first iconic superweapons utilized by the First Order during their war against the New Republic and later the Resistance. However, the story of Starkiller Base stretches way back into the days of the Empire and is honestly kind of fascinating. It's a planet that went from being a sacred place of the Jedi to being a weapon of mass destruction, threatening peace and civility in the entirety of the galaxy. So let's start where this planet's story begins with the world of Ilum. We first see Ilum during the Clone Wars, where it's a world where Jedi Padawans are sent to retrieve their kyber crystals. It's a snowy, icy, barren world with old Jedi runes on it and really not much else. However, it's treated as sacred by the Jedi, its location being hidden in the unknown regions, and the Jedi really not talking about it with anyone outside of the Order. Like I mentioned, it was the sacred place where Jedi Padawans were sent to gather their first kyber crystals to build their lightsabers. This pilgrimage out to Ilum was considered to be a very important and crucial part in a young Jedi's training. And as we see in the Clone Wars, it is a tradition that has carried on for hundreds and hundreds of years. But with the fall of the Jedi Order at the end of the Clone Wars, everything changed. With the Empire building the Death Star, which its super laser runs on kyber crystals, so they need a supply of kyber crystals, any site that was rich in kyber crystals was valuable to the Empire. And the Jedi happen to have a pretty comprehensive list of sites that meet those requirements. After all, they've been sending their Padawans to places like Ilum for hundreds of years to gather their kyber crystals. And Ilum was definitely on that list when the Empire likely commandeered it after storming the Jedi Temple. With that list in the Empire's hands, the Empire began strip mining Ilum, clearing out the kyber crystals and shipping them off to be utilized in the construction of the Death Star. We see during Jedi Fallen Order that Ilum is already significantly mined five years after the rise of the Empire, which to me suggests it's one of the first locations the Empire went to. But there is one notable thing about the size and shape of the excavation site. It perfectly matches the size and shape of the large structure cut out of the surface of the planet that Starkiller Base is on. It's clear that at least by this point, five years into the reign of the Empire, Ilum was already flagged as a potential location for the construction of this super laser, which would have been sort of in the works at this time. Now, to me, it seems likely that during the first 20 years of the reign of the Empire, Ilum was continuously mined for kyber crystals to fund and supply the construction of the Death Star. But with the Death Star's completion, the efforts on Ilum likely shifted to the construction of a new superweapon, which could sort of surpass the Death Star's power. This led the beginning of the conversion of these mining sites into the sites that would become the super laser and power structure on Starkiller Base. Speculation, by the way, but my assumption is that this project probably shifted its focus right around the time of the Battle of Yavin. That would mean that the project would only be five years into its development by the fall of the Empire and the signing of the Galactic Concordance at the end of the Battle of Jakku. Luckily for the project, unluckily for the rest of the galaxy, a new government would come along to start funding it, and that government would be the First Order. When they fled into the Unknown Regions, it's likely that they found Ilum in the sort of sea of uncharted planets out there. Perhaps they may have actually had the coordinates listed from a list of old Imperial projects. Still, using the information they were able to gather from older Imperial projects, as well as the progress that had been made already on Starkiller Base by the Empire, the First Order was able to complete the research and finish building the weapon in about 30 years. With the weapon completed, it could finally be unleashed. As far as we know, Starkiller Base was only fired once against the Hosnian system, the current capital of the New Republic. And while this single attack was the only time the weapon was used, it had a devastating impact on the political structure of the galaxy. However, before the weapon could be utilized again, it was destroyed in an attack carried out by the Resistance with the specific goals of disabling and hopefully destroying the weapon. With its destruction, there's not any evidence that it was rebuilt or sort of reconstructed, and the planet itself was destroyed when the weapon went critical. It's a sort of sad end for a world that clearly meant so much to the protectors of peace and the guardians of the light side to be utilized as a weapon to kill as many people as Starkiller Base did. It's a poignant reminder of how the Empire and later the First Order would take things that were valuable to the galaxy and the Jedi and twist them into serving dark purposes and achieving personal goals at the expense of others. 
Still, the construction of Starkiller Base on Ilum was a massive engineering project, and the only project that could even come close to it was the construction of the Death Star. If you want to learn about the early days of the construction of the Death Star, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to let me know down in the comments what you think of the idea that Ilum is Starkiller Base. Do you think it's a really nice, neat twist, or do you think things are a little bit too connected? And if you have anything you want to see me cover in Star Wars, leave them down below in the comments. And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.